check this out. We made this incredible wooden case. It's made out of oak for this 55 inch television to sit on our gaming table so we can play animated maps with sound effects during our Dungeons and Dragons games. We can put our miniatures right on this and scale the grid so it works perfectly. I love this. I made this with my friend Lou Anders. He's the author of the Thrones and Bones series. This is his gaming table, his gaming setup here, and it's absolutely amazing. I love it. I'm going to show you how we made it. So this is the television that Lou bought that he wanted to put on his gaming table. So he bought the television first and then we're going to build the frame around it. As with most things that I build, I didn't have any kind of plans. I had Lou take some basic measurements of the television and he brought that to the hardware store. So he and I started to buy different uh, supplies for the table. Lou decided to make the whole wood out of oak. So we bought oak planks that were three quarters of an inch thick. You might be tempted to think that you could use some of the thinner planks that are already cut, but that's not the case. Actually, the television is pretty thick, thicker than you might expect, so we were going to have to rip the wood down on the table saw. This is the basic schematic of what I was trying to think out in my head when we were at the hardware store, because we have the television that's three and a half inches thick at its widest point, at its thickest point, and so we've got to measure from that. So we've got three and a half inches for the television, and then we're going to cut a groove into the interior of the case to slide in the plexiglass, and that plexiglass is going to be a quarter of an inch thick, so I've got to cut a quarter of an inch groove, and we want that plexiglass to sit right on top of the television screen, and then we're going to have a quarter of an inch on top of the plexiglass as kind of a lip to hold it in place, and then beneath the television we're going to have to have a half an inch because we're going to put slats underneath it to hold the television in place. So I was kind of adding this together in my head when we were buying the wood, We've got three and a half inches for the television. We've got a quarter of an inch for the plexiglass, a quarter of an inch for the lip. That's four inches. We've got another half an inch beneath the TV, so that's going to be four and a half inches that we need in total height for the case. There are a few different ways that you could join the wood frame together. One is just sticking the two planks and the sides uh, to it. That would be the most basic way. Another way would be to make 45 degree cuts, kind of a miter joint, and put them together. I wanted something that was a bit better than just putting the two uh, planks together butted up against one another. So I decided to go with this saw pattern, this kind of jigsaw pattern that was going to put them together. I thought that might give it a little bit of a rustic look. It is for a D&D gaming table anyway. And even though it was a little bit more work, I thought it was going to look a bit nicer and also kind of provide an aesthetic to the table. Kind of like it was put together in a, a medieval woodworking shop or something. So the lengths of the boards that needed to be cut needed to be a quarter of an inch longer on each side, so an inch and a half longer than the dimensions of the table, because we're going to cut out that jigsaw shape. I didn't have that prepared, so what I did was I used Adobe Illustrator while I was in uh, Lou's garage, and we just cut out a template for that that we just taped to the boards so that we could mark the jigsaw shape. Here you can see it quite nicely, and also you can see that we're going to be using screws as the attachment pieces here. I'm countersinking all of the screws, that way we can put caps on them, that way you won't see the screws when the case is finished. And I also pre-drilled all of the holes. I think that might be what I'm doing here, because I was very afraid that if I tried to screw in these screws that the wood was going to split, and I did not want that to happen. I didn't want to have to remake any of these pieces, so everything was pre-drilled. Lou wanted the plexiglass that's in this case that's going to be protecting the top of his television during gameplay to be sitting right on top of the TV screen. So we were going to put a quarter of an inch of plexiglass on top of the TV screen. And so in order to do that, we needed to route out a groove that was going to go all the way around that we could slide this plexiglass into. So having the router table was an excellent uh, way to do this quickly. I don't know how I would have done it without a router table, actually. There's one of the finished short pieces. Again, you can see the groove that's going to have the plexiglass inserted, and then also that tab on the end, which is going to allow us to put the table together. Here we are actually assembling it, and as you can see, I'm putting in the screw by hand. I did not want to split the wood, that's why I pre-drilled all the holes, and then we just used handheld screwdrivers to put the screws in, so if we felt there was too much tension or something like that, then we could uh, stop and pull the screw back out. Fortunately, we didn't split any of the wood this way. 
We took the whole thing into his living room several times to test fit it with the television, and you can see that test fit here. I think this is before we put in any of the screws. We're going to leave the back of the whole thing open so that there's lots of airflow around it, and it also makes the back of the television very accessible so we can uh, hook up the power and also the HDMI cable and anything else. And that way we don't have to worry about drilling out holes for uh, cable accommodation or anything like that. The entire back of the television is open. It's really starting to look like something, and as you can see, Lou is very happy about that. These slats that hold the television in, we wanted to set them down inside the uh, sides, so we accounted for that when we cut the width of the sides. It's a half an inch thick slat. So we used a combination of a jigsaw and I believe a scroll saw to cut out those notches that will allow the slats to fit down against them and, uh, and leave a smooth edge on the edge of the case. So here I am with a template again that I whipped up in Adobe Illustrator while we were working because I need to be able to cut out an area for the speakers of the television and also there might be some airflow around there too. You can see those on that side. So we didn't want to cover up any of that, especially, well, especially the airflow of course, but also the speakers because we want to be able to use it for sound effects during the game. So we measured out where those holes needed to be and I'm going to cut out some rectangles there to accommodate the speakers and the fan. Every TV is different, and that's why you need to have your television so you know exactly what you're going to be making as far as airflow and accommodations for cables and all of that goes. I'm using a jigsaw here to try to cut out those rectangles. This was not ideal. I wasn't too happy with the cuts here. We may end up covering these with the screen later. But actually, when the whole thing was finished, I didn't really notice all that much anyway. So here you can see the bottom piece with the rectangles cut out for the speakers and the vent. We squared up the television very nicely with a dry fit here so that we could measure exactly where we needed to cut off those slats for the back. Then we cut them off. It's really starting to look like a case now. So then we took it back into the garage and put screws in to attach those slats to the back. We used half an inch screws for this and we also countersunk them just a little bit. We're not going to worry about capping these because they're on the back and you'll never see them. But we did want them to sit flush against those slats there. And there it is. It kind of looks like we're building a box. It sure took a lot of effort though. Everything takes longer than you think it will. Here's our test fit with the television inside turned right side up. Now an important point here is that this case not only has to uh, surround the television and protect it, but it also has to level it because the back of most television screens are not flat. They're not designed to sit on a table like this and be completely flat. After that, I set Lou to work sanding. We had sanded some of the pieces first, but it was really good also to sand it when it was assembled like that, so that if there's some high point or something where two pieces of wood connect, they could go ahead and be sanded flat and flush. After sanding, the whole thing was disassembled. There was a lot of assembly and disassembly. We did that quite a bit. We put in a lot of screws and we took out a lot of screws. We took it all apart so that it could be stained. So basically it took about a weekend of work to get the case to this point, and then I left it with Lou to stain it. He used a dark walnut stain because that matches his gaming table and also a lot of his gaming accessories. And so over the next week, he stained. In some cases, the stain didn't do exactly what he wanted it to on the first try, and so we ended up sanding it down and then restaining, but ended up getting a really great dark wood effect for the entire case. He also coated it in polyurethane. He put on two coats of polyurethane to protect it. Then I came back over to test fit some of the hardware. We had picked up some very nice brushed silver uh, drawer handles that we're putting on the case. That way we can lift it up off the table for storage and then put it back on. And then also for feet, because we want the whole case to be up off the, uh, off the tabletop for airflow, we picked up some drawer poles that are also some very nice silver and those are going to become the feet for the entire case. And so we're putting on six feet on the uh, bottom slats there. Before we disassembled the whole thing so that Lou could stain it, we did measure the entire case because we wanted to custom order the plexiglass to fit the case that we had built. We thought that would be the best way to do that so that rather than trying to just order the glass from plans or something, we'd go ahead and build exactly what it needed to be and then order the glass to fit. So we ordered the plexiglass, which is just an acrylic glass from Tap Plastics, and then when the glass came in, I came back to not only put on the hardware, but then also slide in the glass. So here you can see with the frame reassembled, sitting in his living room, we left one side off so that we could slide in the glass. And there's the glass. The whole case is sitting upside down right now so we can put in the television. One advantage of having these screws to put the entire thing together with is that we could slide the whole television down inside with the screws loose 
and then tighten all the screws around the television. That allowed us to get a really nice tight fit around the television without having to be super precise with all of the measurements. Now let's talk about leveling the television. It was easy enough to drop the television down in the case when the whole case is upside down, so we knew that's exactly how we wanted it to fit. But as you can see right here, the back of the television is sloped, so this doesn't just naturally want to stay level on your table. After much thought, we came up with a very easy solution to keep that television exactly where we wanted it. With the television upside down on the plexiglass exactly like we wanted it, we cut this piece of oak and then set it down on the top of the TV, as you can see, and pushed it down as far as it would go. That way it's going to hold it right there. So that piece of oak is sitting at that same angle that the television is at. But then we drilled a couple of different holes in both sides. That way we could take screws and drive the screws into that piece of wood. And the television after that did not move. It was great. There was still just one other thing to do to keep the television level in the case. And that was to fill up the little bit of gap that there was between that central slat and the bottom. It wanted to wiggle just a little bit. But rather than try to cut a piece of wood or do some kind of uh, fancy cut or something to keep that exactly where we wanted it, we decided to just use foam. This is just the craft foam you get from the store. We have it sitting around like you know any kind of uh, craft store or hobby store. And we found that three layers of this rather thin foam would make the center slat there fit very, very snug against the television. So when we screwed that center slat on, we just put three layers of foam there. That took up the gap perfectly, and the whole television stayed level. That is basically the whole case. Here's a close-up of a corner, so you can see how we have the wood going together here at this corner. And you can see that I've got the screws countersunk. I think that I pull them out again here and countersink just a little bit more. At this point, we decided to test the TV. Before we really finalized it so that it wasn't going to come apart, we decided to make sure that everything was working, and we hooked it up to Lou's laptop. And it works, and when we saw it sitting there working with all the sound effects and everything, man, it was incredible. We couldn't wait to go ahead and get it finished. So knowing that everything worked, we attached the buttons over all the screws, and then we lifted it into place in the center of Lou's gaming table. And this is Tablezilla by Carolina Game Tables. And as you can see, it fits very well. The intention here is the television will live inside the case, so that way we can remove the entire case from the table when we're not gaming, and it can just be stored inside of its case, and then come right back to the gaming table the next time we play. You can see how the case sits up above the surface of the table, and that allows us to pull the wires out and not have to worry about drilling holes. They can go wherever they need to go in order to plug it in and wherever the game master happens to be sitting uh, to hook up to the laptop. Here is a very tired but very happy Lou with the entire table set up and ready to go for tomorrow's game. We got this finished at about 10 o'clock at night, and we had the first game on it at 10 o'clock the next morning. Its inaugural game was the start of Storm King's Thunder, and we had a great time with it. Where this whole setup really shines is when you're using one of the dynamic maps that's made by Dynamic Dungeons. We scaled the grid on this so it was a one-inch grid for our miniatures. When you have the animation of water, or clouds, or a breeze blowing through the trees, or even a fire in a tavern, with all of the ambient sound that's included with these maps, it is really an incredible gaming setup. It took us a solid weekend to build the frame, then I came back to Lou's house uh, for a couple of extended afternoons to work on the project while he was staining and putting on polyurethane in between. So it was not a, a quick thing to do as far as calendar time goes, but we got it done in time for the D&D game. If you enjoyed it, please let me know. If you have questions, please put them in the uh, comments below. I'll be happy to answer. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in many more videos to come.